Hey everyone, welcome back to the CYPT channel. It's been a while since I made a video. I finally finished my fall semester of school and got some free time. Today we're looking at RIPT 2021 problem number 5, Synchronized Candles. The problem statement tells us that when we place several burning candles next to each other, the flames will oscillate. Then this oscillation can be either in phase or anti-phase depending on the distance between them. The problem wants us to explain and investigate this phenomenon. A warning before we start, this experiment uses burning candles, and I'll make some modifications to my candles to make the flame bigger. This makes the candles much more dangerous to handle. The flame really can start a fire, so please be smart about how you do your experiment. Have a fire extinguisher beside you, and have an adult supervision if you're underage. Much of this problem is inspired by an article in the journal Scientific Reports titled Synchronization in Flickering of Three Coupled Candle Flames. In this video, we will set up our experiment in a very similar way. I'll link the paper in the video description. To begin, first we should make a windproof chamber. My chamber will have two compartments separated by a metal mesh. It will have a structure like this, and on one side I'll have a polycarbonate window to allow for observations. Let's make the box first. Shout out to Dave for helping me out with the construction of the box. To start, we found some pieces of 1x2 and 2x2 pieces of wood and cut them into size. Then we built up the frame of the box by attaching the wood pieces using screws. We bought this large roll of garden mesh and we cut out a piece of it to serve as a platform for the candles. We were very careful when unpacking the wire mesh, we didn't want the wires to spring out and hurt our eyes. Next, we got a few pieces of MDF. This is a wood fiber board, often used as plywood. We cut out three pieces of this MDF to make the walls of our box. We also cut out a couple of holes in the board at the bottom to allow for the air to flow in. We nailed the MDF board onto the frame. And finally, we installed the two hinges and a clear polycarbonate door. To help with the airflow and exhaust, I installed three computer fans and some activated carbon filter to help reduce the amount of smoke. Next up, we need to prepare our candles. The candles that I bought from the store have very thin wicks. We need thicker wicks to produce a large enough flame for the oscillation. To modify the candle, first I used a drill to drill out the wick of the candle and the wax around it. Next, I twisted some cotton strings together to form a thicker wick and inserted it into the candle. To ensure that the candle stands, I got several metal caps, put a small piece of wax in it, then I hit it with a blowtorch to melt the wax. Before the wax re-solidifies, I put the candle on the edge of the cap, and this will allow me to change the wick separation by simply turning this cap. The wax solidifies and it acts as a glue and holds the candle to the cap. To be able to introduce a controlled disturbance, I placed a subwoofer under the mesh and this will be driven by an amplifier and the signal from a function generator. Now I'm finally ready to demonstrate the phenomenon. When we light the three candles, sometimes the oscillation will begin on its own. The flame's height and brightness oscillates within a range of levels. We say the oscillation is in phase if all three flames goes bright and dim at the same time. According to the paper, we should also be able to see anti-phase oscillation. This is when two of the flames are in sync and the third one is half an oscillation out of phase. We should also be able to see a cyclic oscillation. This is when the candles are a third of an oscillation out of phase. The brightest candle shifts between the three candles in a circle. Sometimes when the candle just starts to burn, it doesn't start the oscillation immediately. And as I turn on the subwoofer to introduce some disturbance, the oscillation begins. Now that I have the video, I can do a bit of analysis. First of all, when I bring the videos into my editing software, I can show the video scopes. From the parade, we can see that the red channel is the brightest, it is overexposed. The green channel is dimmer and the blue channel is even dimmer. This makes sense because a burning flame is approximately a black body. We know that the flame temperature is approximately 1500 Kelvin, so it makes sense for the longer wavelength of visible light to be higher in intensity, and the intensity falls off as the wavelength decreases to blue. 
To see exactly how the flame flickers, I wrote a short Python script to extract the pixel levels from each of the flames and plot them against time. As the flame just begins to oscillate, the brightness level versus time looks like this. We could see that the oscillation begins at about 300 frames and the amplitude starts to grow from there. Then I filmed another clip of the flame in seemingly steady oscillation. Plotting out the brightness versus time of the entire clip looks like this. Although the oscillation seems to be steady, but the amplitude of the oscillation can vary greatly. Since the frequency of this oscillation is rather high, it is almost impossible for our eyes to tell. We also see that for all three candles, the mean brightness is roughly constant over time. Out of this whole clip, we can pick out the short section in which the candle goes through antiphase and circular oscillations. First, we see that the left and right candles are in phase. Sometimes later, the left and middle candle becomes in phase. At other times, we see a circular progression that goes from the middle candle to the right candle then to the left candle. How can we tell what is the phase angle between the three candles? We can make a plot of the brightness of one candle on the x-axis and the brightness of the other candle on the y-axis. This way, if the candles are perfectly in phase or perfectly out of phase, we should be able to see a straight line. If they are 90 degrees out of phase, we should see some sort of loop. This type of graph is called a Lisa Zhu figure. It is a great way to visualize the phase angle and frequency ratio of different periodic signals. Here, the oscillation is not sinusoidal and the sampling rate is limited, so the graph looks a little ugly, but we can see the general structure begin to appear. To see the source of this oscillation, we must look into the airflow in the region between the flames. Here I have some incense beside the flame to let you see how the air flows. I found this problem super fascinating and this video just scratches the surface on this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.